Hello Westman and welcome to one more edition of our show Café Diversity. This show is brought to you by WCG TV and Westman Immigrant Services. And on this show we take you on a journey to meet all the people, the diverse people and communities that form Westman. We're going to see about their background, their stories and the many ways they contribute to our communities. Today I'm very lucky to have here um, Caroline Sleeman. She is the manager of BCLC, which is the Brandon Community Language Center here in Brandon from Westman Immigrant Services. I also have on the set uh, Susan Clark, I Ireland Clark. Did I say that correctly? That's perfect. Okay. Yes. And she's the office manager of Wheat City Medical Clinic. And finally, we have Tina McWaychuk, and she's the booking agent of Brandon Community Language Center. Now today, uh, all of us are gonna be uh, talking about what BCLC does. And what they do is they run an amazing program of interpreting in Brandon, where they have interpreters to serve our communities and to go out and deliver uh, the service. So we're going to start with Caroline. How are you today? I'm good, thanks. Yeah. So Caroline, um, give us a little bit of uh, background on BCLC, because BCLC uh, has been around now for a few years, mm -hmm. but it wasn't like that before. Sure. Um, it was it was started, I guess it was decided um, when the numbers, when we realized that we were going to have a large newcomer population moving to Brandon. Um, a good sort of five or six years ago, it was decided that there would be a need for a professional interpreter service to serve the people that didn't have very good English um, so that they, they could access the services to which they had um, they, they could, were allowed to, but with, the, with their um, citizenship and their, uh, their um, status in the country, they, they were able to access all sorts of services, but because of the language, it was decided that there would be a barrier to accessing service. So an interpreter service was created um, on a professional level to um, honor sort of some of the standards of practice and code of ethics of interpreting. Um, to offer a service for the Brandon community that withheld some of, or upheld some of these um, standards um, like confidentiality and impartiality and accuracy in interpreting. So okay, so let me go back a little yeah. bit. So we, we have been talking in our shows um, about uh, the huge wave of immigration that Brandon and Westman in general, and I could say Manitoba, mm -hmm. um, have had in the past, and we have had a lot of people coming. So they come and they start working on their settlement, and we've been talking about Westman Immigrant Services and the, the, the work they did there. But uh, they also get into learning English. Very interestingly, we had um, EAL uh, uh, people last show here talking about how they learn English and they work hard at, at that, but they also need to get a basic service, like going to the doctor, right? Going exactly. to um, any kind of um, service that the government provides and all sort of different things that we all take for granted, mm -hmm. right? So that's where BCLC is so important. Um, what, how was it before? You, you already mentioned a little bit, but before BCLC was there, what options did, did they have? Well, um, from what I understand, and it's it's grown. We've we started the program in two thousand and nine, and and it's grown significantly in in the last five years. But prior to having a professional service, um, from what I understand, uh, people were bringing somebody that they knew that spoke English better than they could to appointments and things. So, for example, to the schools or to um, doctors' appointments and things. So you you would have you know a child or um, perhaps a, a relative or somebody that maybe had a little bit more English but maybe wouldn't be that accurate or um, certainly not you know wouldn't have confidentiality and impartiality as part of their their background mm -hmm. so um, so there were there were sort of attempts but I think that it wasn't uh, so it wasn't and I don't want to very imagine formalized formalized yeah. the situation of going to a doctor for example and having you know not having enough words to express what I need to express or having to mm -hmm. trust uh, my little kid or my friend to talk 
because they know more English. So, Susan, you, you can witness. Uh, yes, you know, those types those. of scenarios mm -hmm. are not ideal. So you were there um, before BCLC started, and of course you've yes. continued working there. Yes, I worked at uh, Wheat City Medical Clinic um, shortly after it first opened, which was really just kind of a year or two before um, the interpretive service became available to us. and. Uh, we kind of jumped on board right away because it is such a help, not just to the patients, but also to our physicians. Um, it just makes the entire appointment go smoother, probably even slightly quicker, um, because you're not trying to find the right words to explain something to someone whose language, first language isn't English. Um, when Caroline touched on, or you touched on, um, children coming to appointments with their parents or a friend coming with a friend. Sometimes there's confidential um, issues that you don't want discussed with your child there or your friend. Um, so this just makes it a lot more confidential and, and just easier, I think, for the patients. I imagine. Now, we were talking before um, uh, about the numbers, and you were mentioning some big numbers there. <laughs> How big is the need for that uh, interpreter well, service? In, in actually, uh, until today, I wasn't ex entirely sure of what the numbers were. I know we've had a lot of people um, come through the clinic more than once, and many of them, um, several, several times, many of them. But Caroline had mentioned that um, about 4,000, I mm -hmm. think It's over 4,000. Over 4,000 yeah. have wow. used the service. Mm -hmm. So I think that speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. and. Um, I'm glad to hear that because it's worked out very well for us too as a clinic. So now, mm. um, to have a picture and people to be able to understand, how does it work to book an interpreter? Like you need to go to a doctor, you make an appointment like anybody else, and then what happens? Well, we have a particular day where we um, we employ interpreters to come to the clinic. And uh, we have two clinics, actually, um, two locations. So for a certain part of the day, we have Spanish-speaking interpreters. And later in the day, we have Mandarin-speaking interpreters. So, um, and that's on Saturdays. And so the patients get to know that. Or if they phone and they don't know that, we can let them know that it might be easier for them to come on a Saturday when there is an interpreter available to them. They don't pay us for that service. Um, it's just available to them, and then when they arrive, um, they're right from the moment they come through the door, the interpreters are great. They greet them and explain to them how it's gonna work if they've never used the service before. And then they go into the doctor's office, and actually it's so confidential, I can't tell you what happens from there. Mm -hmm. But um, they come out, I think, very happy, so <laughs> that's really what we want. That's good. Now, 4,000 uh, appointments a month, um, that's, well, actually, no, the, the figure 4,000 is how many people, ha since we've been oh, since collecting these statistics, okay, that's how many people number. have had that service. And yes, that tells me that Tina, service. who is the, uh, the booking agency, she must be yeah. the busiest person in the world. <laughs> <laughs> now, Tina, um, I mentioned before, uh, people booking interpreter, they have to call you. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about the process. <clears throat> so we have, in Brandon, uh, we're very fortunate we have uh, service providers. Service providers are um, people like Weed City Medical or um, um, Child and Family Services, Manitoba Public Insurance, anything that we do in our day-to-day -day life as, that's essential for us to, to live. Um, most of those uh, businesses um, are our service providers. And what they do is um, they will call us. Um, for example, uh, diagnostic imaging at the hospital. They'll have uh, someone who's coming in for an MRI and they uh, speak Mandarin. So they will call us and request that we um, uh, send an interpreter for that specific patient. We make all the arrangements and book the interpreters. Sometimes we also do something called a message relay where um, they will ask us to phone the patient and uh, not only book the interpreter but also make sure that the patient understands um, when they're supposed to be there. We relay instructions if there's any specific instructions. Um, anything that English, an English person would take for granted just in everyday, everyday life. Um, and then we have people like, like the Wheat City Medical Clinic who are ongoing um, 
service providers and we know that we have them every Saturday so we um, make arrangements months in advance to make sure there's always um, the interpreters that they need and, and have requested. Now we were talking about service providers and how important that is but um, they can also book an interpreter on an individual basis. Individual basis, right? basis so yes. If you're mm -hmm doing your own personal business mm -hmm. such as buying a house or yeah. selling a house yeah. to a non-English speaking person, you could uh, call BCLC and get that service. Yes, we provide um, individual bookings as well. Um, anyone can come. We have a variety of languages. We have um, Spanish, Mandarin, Cantonese, French, Dutch, uh, Ukrainian, Russian, Hameric, and uh, Tagalog, which is uh, Filipino. Um, so anyone with any of those languages um, can come and um, book an interpreter and the interpreter will meet them at the place required and um, do their thing there. So it's a, it's a simple process, they just can come into the building, we give them a receipt and make sure the person's available for them. Great. Now, Carolyn, we were talking about, and Tina is mentioning all these languages and it sounds like, um, you know, they are just at the tip of your fingers, but it's been a long process to get all that in place and you've been the person that's uh, managed to do and to put all the pieces in place. Uh, how was the process of getting all these languages available? It, it, was, it was quite a process. I, I did um, inherit a very, very strong group of interpreters when I started in the job, so that was really, um, they, they'd already started working, but we were just very new at the whole thing. So, um, But one of the great things that, that we all stand by and which really makes this a, a sort of special um, program, I think, is that they have very good training. So uh, it's quite a process to choose an interpreter to get to the point where somebody is, goes through a training. But once they get through the training, they, they learn an awful lot about how to be a professional interpreter. So it's something that we really hold on to because I think um, Susan's mentioned it sort of off camera that um, she's noticed the, the level of professionalism that they bring with it. Yes. So that's something that we really um, appreciate. We have a great training program for them. So so that gets them I could ready. Just add to that. Um, I think we started using the service in 2009, and I have not had one phone call or mention of any um, breach of confidentiality. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're, that just rates very highly with us. I think we would probably terminate the, the service if there was any sort of, you know, breach in confidentiality. We just can't have that in a doctor's office. So. Now, you, you mentioned an interesting point because um, a lot of people might think, and I used to think like this a lot of, uh, a long time before, that interpreting is just to speak in the two languages, mm -hmm. right? But there is a lot more involved. You've mentioned the process of training. Mm -hmm. um, that involves, of course, um, a very difficult testing, like mm -hmm. you were saying, of cameras too. Um, what else do they learn on the training? We have mentioned confidentiality and mm -hmm. It's, it's, we found that one of the, the interesting things, because we, we do have a very small community here, so, um, so we know that when we have an interpreter working in a certain language that they will probably know a lot of the people that they end up interpreting for. So some of the training prepares them for how to manage that situation so that they're not um, uh, compromised in terms of uh, their actual ability to interpret accurately and also to maintain that confidentiality and impartiality. And one of the things that um, I think they've proved, you know, on ongoing is that um, that training really has helped them to deal with that. That's been a question they always have when they're going through the training is, you know, well, yes, but I'll, I'll probably know somebody. Well, they, they get managed, they manage to learn, you know, how to, how to handle it. It's quite, kind of complicated to I take imagine. that on, and, and yeah. They work at situations such as medical um, appointments. Mm -hmm. and surgery rooms and they also work with the police and the courtroom so they really need to know how to handle of these situations professionally. Right. Um, yes, they need to be able to walk into um, many different situations and, uh, and be able to sort of assert themselves to the point where they are obviously being professional in their role and, uh, and also being very accurate so that the, the words that are being said by both sides are actually being heard by both sides. That's something we, we really advocate for. Mm -hmm. Now, how many interpreters work at BCLC? Uh, Approximately. We have days. currently, I think, on, on hand, I think we can call on 32 on 
at this point, yes, in, in all the different languages. 32 or 35, depending on holidays and things. So um, we have quite a few that, that we call on, but they're, uh, they're all, uh, in, yes, indispensable <laughs> when we need them, yeah. Yeah, very. And um, roughly 32, and they get busy every week, right? They get lots of different appointments at, at all these service providers. Mm -hmm. um, how do you manage to keep up with the um, demand of new languages coming into town? Mm. Um, well, we, we've, we've sort of, I think we've covered most of the, the, the high demand languages, um, but there's always sort of the odd request that Tina will get that will just kind of throw us a little bit. We will have the odd one that, that we really don't have covered because it's a very small demand. Mm -hmm. And so we're always kind of d just looking at the figures and seeing where those demands are coming. And looking forward, we would like to add Korean um, as one, uh, Hindi and Gujarati are two other languages that we've seen demand for. So we're always sort of watching our statistics and seeing where the demand is coming, yeah. Mm -hmm. Something that's uh, really interesting too, we were uh, discussing before, is that you say, uh, Susan, that even though we have this amazing service available, um, the clinic only has some days uh, uh, interpreters on site because of uh, how it is, the possibilities and all. So you still have people that come in and you know bring a friend or don't yes. bring an interpreter. How is the difference in the service? Um, How difficult it is for you? Well, initially I'll just sort of backtrack. We did try um, using the service an evening uh, because we're open late till nine in the evening. Um, we tried having the service in, on on an evening shift. Um, as well as on, I think it was a Saturday morning, if I recall, it seems so long ago now. But um, we found that the, the real need, because um, some of the families don't have cars or whatever, it was, it was better, or they're coming with another family member or a friend, it was better to just have all day on Saturday, um, or a good portion of the day from 11 till 5. Um, the, when they do come in without an interpreter, <coughs> It definitely lengthens the appointment. Um, I think any of the physicians would say that it makes it more difficult to know if you're getting a clear picture of what the problem is or maybe what caused the problem. Say they have a sore elbow um, and they maybe work uh, in a labor position where the, the, the uh, action that they do all day is very repetitive. You don't know if that's what caused it, or maybe they were playing baseball. You know, it's it's kind of more, it's a lot more vague for the physician, and I think that's where they have really bought into the whole idea of having the interpreters. It quickens the appointment. It's, um, you know, when they're with a, a family member like we talked before, it's not as as um, I don't want to say confidential. Usually, you don't have secrets from your family. But I can think of a situation where you have a young boy come in with his mom and she might have some personal issues that she would rather not have discussed with her son, her, you know, mm -hmm. those kinds of things. It's awkward, it's more uncomfortable for the patient mm -hmm. and probably for the doctor as well. So um, definitely it's just more laborious, time consuming and, and just not as comfortable, I would say. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure the clients uh, are also happy to have that service available. It makes it easier for them. They, to they seem to be. They certainly show up on Saturdays. <laughs> We're very busy on Saturdays, mm -hmm. so I think that you know, once they've come in a few times, they get to know. Um, we have, you know, the hours posted and that. So now, Tina, we have been talking about availability of interpreters, and uh, Susan was mentioning they have a special days for interpreters, but also interpreters are available 24/7 for some kinds of situations, yes. right? For the Brennan Police Services and uh, the hospital, um, they are available 24/7. Um, we have uh, people who um, um, have. They have specific people that they can call on, and you know we have things in place that um, provide still the integrity and the privacy of both parties, but that can be done um, after hours when the office is closed. We also provide um, uh, legal clinics, and I mean um, that's something very important as well. Uh, um, many immigrants don't know their rights in Canada, or come with an understanding of their rights from their own country and, and are unable to, um, you know, find out what's available here. So we, we have that as well. And, and the importance about that is that 
the legal clinics, the after hour, hour clinics, uh, police services and the hospital, they also have the language and that's something very important other than sending your a child or a family member. The interpreters um, get special training um, as far as having the correct language and words for these types of appointments as well. So that's also something that makes them, makes it so much more different and professional than, than going with a neighbor or a friend. So not just a confidentiality but having the right words to discuss those matters, those matters um, um, to, you know, for whatever they need. Now, I was mentioning before personal situations such as buying a house or selling a vehicle to an immigrant person. An interpreter would be available from BCLC for that kind of situation too. Yes. Um, the question that everybody, I'm sure, will uh, want to know is how much uh, would it be booking an interpreter from BCLC? Let's say for an hour if I want to, you know. The the, the rate is uh, $27.50. Um, the uh, service, the service, the interpreter gets paid for, for um, their services. And um, again, unfortunately, at this time, we only take cash, but they are given a receipt and everything is very, um, very professional. So it's, it's $27.50 per hour. And it doesn't matter um, what type of appointment it is or what day of the week it is. No, that sounds like really, uh, really good to me. And uh, maybe we have to mention, and it's important for people to know that BCLC is part of a non-for-profit organization yes. mm -hmm. that is West, West Main Million Service, right? So yes. how do you get uh, funding to do all these things? Um, well, we've had multiple funders throughout this process, and uh, we can't, we wouldn't be here without the backing of the, of those funders. So I would say um, the provincial government, uh, essentially the um, city of Brandon, um, now CIC, um, Citizenship and Immigration Canada, um, the United Way of Brandon, the district United Way has been a huge backer of our program, and uh, they've seen the benefit of it right from the start. So all of them have been big players in, in the background there, for sure. Um, I just wanted to add to Tina just that we do have a, a charge for um, service providers or for our clients that is $31.50 and then for individuals that need to book um, it's a slightly different rate so it's $27.50 so we have two different rates there. But do yeah. you get lots of individual appointments as well? We have about 10 a, a month I think it's somewhere in there. We used to be I'm not sure if it's Today we had high. six for some unknown oh, reason. So. So, yeah. <laughs> those kinds of situations? It could be um, a, a special, specialized doctor's appointment. So, for example, somebody needs to go to see a cardiologist. Um, they can choose as an individual whether to, um, you know, d who they can take, who they would like to take. And in many cases, if they have the awareness of our program, they'll choose an interpreter that's been trained so that they know that everything's very, that the risk is managed and that the accuracy is there in the language. So that would be one in situation, um, lawyer's appointments, buying a house or um, those sort of situations. It can be that they would also have um, a need for an interpreter. Going to MPI if there's been a car accident or something and to go and meet with the um, the adjuster could be another situation. So those are some of the ones that I can think of. I'm not sure Bank if I'm missing. Banking. Banking. Actually, yes. yes. And we use the message relay service. If we know that a patient has, we've heard that they have an appointment with a specialist, mm -hmm. um, those appointments are very difficult to get. So we don't want them to miss it. We mm. want to make sure the message is really clear. So rather than us phoning and, and giving them the information of where to go, what day, what time, any special preparation or anything, we will, I will call Tina and we will, or actually one of our clerks will call Tina usually, but they will phone and um, set up um, a message relay service where she will find us a, mm. an interpreter to call the patient, give them the information, and then we just, we pay for that, mm -hmm. but it's worth it to us, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, it's very helpful because we know then that they're getting all the details that they need to get. Of course, um, now, a, a lot of people uh, watching probably um, have this question in mind, and I, I have it. What's the difference between interpreting and translating? Because I can mm. see even on the TV sometimes people <laughs> yes. don't make a difference. 
we like to try and sort of use the terminology as um, to try and sort of make that difference. Um, I know it can be interchangeable and it has been in the past, but we're trying to sort of bring that. So as, as we're saying interpreting, we're talking about spoken, anything, the spoken language. Um, when we say translation, we're talking about anything written. So when you're moving um, a piece of work that's written into another language, then we would say that would be translation, whereas when it's spoken and it's, it's all, audio, um, it's, it's the interpreting that we're talking about. And, not and that's what we do. <laughs> a person that's an interpreter, not necessarily, uh, it's also a, a translator. Sometimes, yes. yes right? That's, that's how we, um, we operate because we can test, we do a national test on all our, for all our interpreters have to pass um, a nationally recognized uh, interpreting test which is recognized across the country and it's very hard to pass um, but having done that then we can you know, be assured that they have that accuracy piece and that they can do the interpreting piece. Now there isn't such a test for translation and translation has its whole, whole, whole other side that is, it's a very, very skilled um, profession and it's not something that we can easily test for, so we don't even touch it, you know, we okay. just, uh, yeah, we stay away from that as best, yeah, now, at this what, point. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. what other communities does BCLC serve? Because you get most of your movements in Brandon and mm -hmm. a lot of service providers are uh, used to get the service, but what other communities can you reach with the service? We have, um, we have provided service in um, Minnedosa, in Ericsson, um, Verdun. I'm trying to think, Verdun, Verdun. Uh, Russell. Um, we've been called to, to those areas already, um, Suris. And um, it's, it, th those are, you know, there's still expansion that can be, can be done there, but um, so far those are the, the main other areas that we've So anyone serviced. basically from Westman area can come and get the service from BCLC? Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Now, um, Tina, maybe Susan um, can talk about this too a little bit, but we were talking about the training and about the certification and all that. What are the common mistakes that a, a person that's interpreting and is not trained properly might do? Um, well, just the common mistakes, I would say, um, uh, would be an introduction. Um, when you have a, a trained interpreter, they introduce themselves and who they are so that both parties are aware and they ask permission to interpret for, on your behalf and both parties will agree or disagree. Um, and just the, the introduction and also the, um, the understanding of how really important it is. Um, what what they really are doing when they're interpreting and how how that can affect both parties in a, in a positive or, or a negative manner. Just the whole importance of what it is. A lot of misconceptions that interpreters are translators or, you know, just going to go and explain the situation, but it's, it's never just that easy. And I think, too, um, there's more room for impartiality mm -hmm. um, when it isn't a trained interpreter. Um, you know, a friend might add to what the doctor says to mm -hmm. them, um, to the patient. And also um, with medical uh, terminology, it's very specialized. So a child might not even quite catch the word and doesn't know how to interpret that into their own language um, because it is a specialized word. Even, you know, myself and others that work at our clinic, we had to take medical terminology in order to work there and we speak the language. So you can imagine how difficult that is for someone who has never taken medical terminology and they're trying to translate from English to Spanish mm. or Mandarin or whatever the language. So that in our situation. Yeah. Well, we're running out of time. I really want to say thanks. We've learned Thank a lot today so about interpreting and how does it work in Brandon, Manitoba through BCLC and West Midland Services. Thanks, uh, Carolyn Sleeman, um, Susan, Ireland Clark, and Tina McWaychuk. <laughs> for being Thanks. here today. Um, this is Cafe Diversity. My name is Jaime Chinchilla. I'm the Cultural Diversity Facilitator for West Miami Services. Thanks for watching. <laughs>